Hey everybody, just like the title says, this video is about my exploration so far in the world of codes and uh, I just wanted to describe to you a new method of coding that I've been using that I think is very effective and at the end of the video I'll try to describe an easier way to do it so that it can be done, uh, I think, more quickly. I should mention that this video was inspired by a video from one of my subscribers, uh, Jim, and uh, if you want to see Jim's original video then just click on this little karate man. Yeah? No? Suit yourself? Anyway, uh, the code that I've created is similar to a Vision Air Cipher, which Jim explains very well in his video, um, but I've manipulated it a little bit, and I'm probably not the first person to do it this way, but I just wanted to describe my method, so here it is. To briefly describe a Vision Air Cipher, it's basically like using an XY coordinate system, except that your Y value is your password and your X value is your message. Uh, to begin, just pick a password. Let's say we pick the word red. So we'll go ahead and highlight that on the chart just for ease of, of, uh, of finding it. And underneath the password, write the message that you want to encode, and repeat the password above it. So let's say we want to encode the word, hello. From there, treat the chart just like an XY coordinate system. For the first letter, uh, use the X value of H and the Y value of R. So we find when we combine H and R, the coded letter is Y. Then just do the same for the second letter. E and E yield I. Repeat this process for every letter of the message, and then you'll have your code. And that's basically a Visionaire cipher. Now, something you could do to make your code harder to break is add another password. One way to add another password is just to put it next to your original one. Let's say that your second password is going to be the word blue. So we just put it next to red and repeat the process as before. This time we'll use a longer message. Hello Tom. And this is what it'll yield. The reason this is advantageous is that the password now repeats every seven letters instead of every three. The longer the password is, the better. Now, here's what I've been experimenting with. Let's say that instead of putting two passwords next to each other, I instead applied them one after the other. First I'll run my original message through my first password, just like before. The difference is that I'm going to take the output of that, what we'll call the transition, and then run it through my second password. In other words, I'm treating my transition here as a new message. I'm going to call this process double coding or multi coding for ease of reference. The advantage of double coding is that it's much harder to crack and it creates a much longer total password length. Using the same two passwords, red and blue, we've created a password that is actually 12 characters long instead of just 7. I'll explain how that works. If we took our two passwords, red and blue, we see that they are 3 and 4 characters long respectively. When we combine them by putting them next to each other, we just get a password length that is equal to the sum of their individual lengths. In other words, 3 plus 4 is 7. However, when we double code them, we yield a total password length that is equal to the least common multiple, or LCM, of the two individual lengths. In other words, the LCM of 3 and 4 is 12. This might not seem like a huge difference, but let's say we use two passwords that are a bit longer, Webster and Dictionary. If we add their two lengths together, we just get a total length of 17, but if we double code them, we find that the total password is 70 characters long. To make it even more complicated, let's say we add a third password, Big. Now looking at the LCM of all three, we see that we have a total password length of 210. Obviously, this gets very big, very fast, and that's why I like this method so much. So that's pretty much all I have to say about my method of coding, and you might be thinking that the main problem of this is that it's just very time consuming to do, to encode a message this way. And if you did it the way that I originally showed, you'd be right, it would be very time consuming. But I do it a more mathematical way, and so let me try to show you that, and then you can actually do it by hand fairly quickly. First we'll take our little chart here and we'll rearrange the order of everything. We'll write the message on top, then the two passwords, repeating of course, and then the code. Next we'll list every letter of the alphabet with its corresponding number, for example A is 1, B is 2, etc. Next we'll replace each letter in our message with its corresponding number. For example, H corresponds with 8, so we replace it with 8. Repeat this for the whole message. Then we'll take each letter in our code words and replace them with a number that is one less than its corresponding number. For example, R corresponds with 18, so we replace it with 17. Repeat this for all the letters in both code words. Now, just take the sum of each column and write that down. For example, in row 1 we have 8, 17, and 1, which sum to be 26. Do this for every column. Finally, just take all those numbers and turn them back into letters. For example, the first column yielded 26, which corresponds with Z, so we write down a Z. Notice that the code yielded using this method is exactly the same as the code yielded using the original method. 
And also, to properly convert those numbers back into letters, you might need to wrap the numbers again. So when you end Z at 26, then start A at 27 and keep going. So that's it. That's my method of double coding, and that's my technique for doing it quickly. If you haven't done so already, you should really watch Jim's video, which I'll try to link right here. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just leave them in the comments section below. Thanks.